Okay, long story short, over the winter, that valve failed. It allowed my full uh, main tank to push gas through the valve into the aux tank, which is a 2.8 gallon jerry can in the saddlebag. Main tank went down, the top of the aux tank was below the top of the main tank, so the gas overflowed into the saddlebag onto the ground. Also, the trunk was cracked, so instead of repairing that, I'm moving the gas from the saddlebag, where it was filling with vapors anyway, to the trunk, so I can use both saddlebags for luggage, use the, the rear rack for auxiliary fuel, and also fishing pole holders, because I want to go fishing, but I also want to ride. So I need to replace that valve and build a fuel cell. I thought about using this propane tank over here, but when I filled it with water to simulate how heavy it would be with gas, it weighs a million pounds. So I thought, well, maybe not that. So I've got R134A canisters like this. And if I take both of the bottoms off like this and then weld them together and throw some bungs and a fill cap on it, it'll hold about four and a half gallons. And it's also uh, much thinner than the 20 pound cylinder. So that's the plan. So I'm gonna finish cutting this and then I'm gonna grind a few spots, tack it together, just kind of set stuff on there to see how it looks and we'll go from there. Okay, just a couple little tacky tacky tackies. And it looks to be about the same width as the rack with these little bumps that uh, were feet at one point. So I've got the neck in there and I did actually trim that pipe so it's not a square pipe going in there. It follows a curvature of the tank. It extends in there about an eighth of an inch. It's got a cap a lot like that one. So I'll have this on here like so. So it's on the high side. And then I'll probably have a vent over here the hose running somewhere safe to let vapor or um, liquid out and the reason i haven't welded this down the center is i'm going to split this back open once i have all the bungs and stuff welded in clean it out weld a baffle in there just some mesh in between the two pieces and then weld it together for final assembly i want to be able to take it apart and clean it instead of trying to flush everything through a baffle later on so all right, we got the, uh, I mean, we got the smoker running, but beyond that, um, I finished welding in the neck last night, and then today I welded in this 90 degree fitting, which it's just got um, a very small eighth inch hole on the inside, and all that's for is to let the uh, pressure changes from the temperature outside versus temperature inside, expansion, contraction, that sort of thing. Just lets it vent, and I'm just gonna run a line somewhere safe, probably run it with the wiring there and then just have it down behind the bike because I wanted away from the exhaust because there could be gas leaking out of it. There will like, absolutely be gasoline vapors coming out of it. Um, over on this side I've got two bungs welded in and it's actually just a quarter by eighth bushing but um, it's just something a little thicker for me to weld to. Um, I got that welded in there and then what I'll do is I'll put a 90 and a 90 and just have a clear piece of hose here for level indication. And now what I need to do is put a sump on the bottom and then once I get that done, I'll knock this thing apart, clean it out really good, um, and then build something to mount it to the rack. Ta-da! I didn't put a sump on it, I ended up just putting a bung on it because it'll work fine. And it's not like it's got a fuel pump in it that would need a constant supply of gas anyway. It's just just a drain. There's the baffle. I just want to keep it from sloshing side to side. Front to back, I'm not worried about as much. This will keep it mostly in check. I don't want to put a ton of baffles in there. It's not that big. It just adds weight. So there it sits. Um, I got it all welded together. I just took these two, sandwiched them together, and... Uh, welded that baffle in between them so they're all three welded together right there along the seam so that's what it looks like Got bung on the bottom pipe and a crepe bung and a blintz bung on the bottom uh, and then we got the level over here fill cap over here vent 
Now I just gotta mount it. My battery is low, it's getting dark, and it's cold. <laughs> so this is what I've got so far. The tank will sit right on these pieces, and I've got this piece of angle in the back, the full width of the rack for two reasons. One, so it supports on the outside of the rack, because it's there's an air gap, and I'm gonna have to get a spacer for the uh, bolt there. But um, also that's the, the full width, because I'm gonna put my uh, fishing pole holders on there. So it just sits on there just like that. You can see the, uh, the bung for the gas out underneath there. Potentially could add a backrest in the future. Unlikely, but something I thought about. So it's just bolted um, using the factory mounting points here and here, which are actually fine. They were um, stripped out for the factory size bolts, but these work. And then up here, it's just drilled through the rack. I'm gonna have to put a fastener on the bottom, um, but um, angle iron onto this flat. Um, I got a little spot ground in it there for that seam to clear. Then I'll just weld here, here, and here, much like I did here, here, and here, except I'll weld this angle to the tank. I'll weld the tank to this. So here it is. I've got it welded to the mounts. And what I'm going to do is, because the hardware is too long to go down from the top, I'm going to come up from the bottom. And this is actually threaded right now, so I'll thread into that and then I'll put a nut, a lock nut on top of it just to make sure it doesn't come off in all four areas. And then here I'm just going to cut some spacers that are the right size um, so I'm not pulling that down into that gap. All right, we got the fill cap on, she's got an O-ring in it, I've got a hose on the vent with a vice grip on it. And then over on this side, I've just got a tube put in here for the uh, fill. And then I've got an airline fitting. And then pick this up. And then we'll go down here. And we don't need very much pressure. Just enough to fill it with air. Okay, I can hear it moving. It's like 10 PSI, which is more than enough. So now I'm gonna get some soapy water and see if it leaks. Okay, I finally got all the little leaks sealed up. Mostly I had trouble with this because it's a cast piece and it was dirty and there's porosity, you know, garbage in the weld, made it hard to get it sealed. So um, in the future, I'll probably just weld stainless to steel and forget about it because the stainless ones are usually one solid piece that's machined instead of a cast one full of voids and crap. Anyway, I got it, it's sealed, but now it's all soapy. So what I'm gonna do is go rinse it off and then I'm gonna wipe it down with acetone and then I'm gonna paint it. And then, got the first couple coats on. Well, here's the next little treat. This is leaking out of the valve side. So it's not leaking past these O-rings and it's not just leaking through, it's leaking outside here. There is no rebuild kit. This part is no longer available. But if we walk over here, this, is one off of my 79 gold wing that's out in the driveway. The only difference that I can find is mine does not have a reserve. See it's a little ball in there. This one it's just open. So if I just use on and off on this it should work. Reserve will not do anything. So if we look at this hunk of shit, it's got two ports, obviously, because one's a pickup tube for the bottom of the tank and one's a pickup tube for reserve. And we look at this one, and it's only got one port. So I'm just going to clean that off, put this on, hope it works. All right, it's about 45 minutes later. It hasn't leaked a drop. I've got new hoses running to my um, 
Y fitting back there, new hose running to a new filter to the fuel pump. This hose is going to go up here to a shutoff, and that's what I'm building a bracket for right now. There it is. Pretty simple. It's getting dark, too dark to see, but I have a very dirty motorcycle, one, but I have the bracket in. I have the shutoff for the aux tank in the off position. The main tank is also in the off position at the moment. This is out of my 1000 Goldwing. Both of these lines run to a T, or a Y to be more accurate, into a filter, into the pump. This has um, some protective covering on it, and it goes under the seat along the frame, pops out back here, and then I just need to finish the tank and then um, zip tie that to the frame rail, probably. Um, well, nah, I'll probably just let it hang. I'll zip tie it back here. That is ready for the auxiliary tank. Okay, the clear coat, gloss clear coat is done. It's very, very shiny. And um, it's flashed off enough that I can move it inside, but it's not dry enough to actually start working with it, and I don't have the hardware to mount it anyway. So, uh, well, I cut the spacers for the rack, but that's as close as it's gonna get tonight. Okay, the system is finished, installed, done. Um, I do have a new valve on order, but it is for a 1000 or 1100 Goldwing, so it's got the reserve port on it. So it'll be the same as this one, except not from 1979. As far as I could tell, they don't make them for 1200 Goldwing, and I couldn't find one for under $100, so I'm just going to go with the old style because they're $40. Um, short of anything being accidentally messed up on install, I should be good. Um, I also threw some new spark plugs in it while I was at it because I got a big trip coming up. Um, so here's the tank mounted and everything. Um, I went with uh, some nuts that I ground down just a little instead of those spacers I had cut. Um, I elongated these holes here and here so I could put the hardware down from the top. Um, there's plenty of space back here. I've got enough bolt left I can mount fishing pole holders with those if I want. Um, I didn't have the right size hose clamps, so I just uh, used some stainless steel safety wire. I mean, this hose wouldn't have come off anyway. You'd have to cut it off of these, but, you know, it's a nice little touch. Looks like I'm actually trying to keep the hose on it. And I think, I think I can see this in the mirror, but if not, it's just a quick look back to see what the level in the aux tank is. Uh, the vent here, it's a very small hole on the inside, tube goes down underneath, inside here, and then that runs with the trailer wiring down here, zip tied out of the way. I'll probably cut this shorter, but I just wanted to have the vent away and behind the bike, away from the exhaust, away from the tire, and then I've got my trailer wiring here. I can reposition it if I need to, because that's just a just a magnet, but I'm putting it right there so I can keep some load on it so it doesn't bounce around. Saddlebag reinstalled, I put these pieces of rubber back in. Um, yeah, so now we just need to take it to the gas station, see how much fuel this holds, add that to how much the main tank holds, figure out my range. I just got back from my test ride, about 50 miles. Um, I was running like this, which is just running off the aux tank. And if I do this, that aux tank will feed into the main tank and try and fill it, which I don't want to do right now because the main tank still has a lot of gas in it. So this now is just pulling off of the main tank. Um, that all works. 50 miles, no problem. I had this full to the point of brimming over and a little bit of fluid got down the vent line, but, um, it came out safely. 3.7, I think. I'll put a video, or not video, I'll put the picture up at the end of the video here with the math on it. Um, and you can see the uh, level indication here. So it works. It's a, another project completed and successful for a change.